Ciao, jewelry making friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel. I am so excited because I got my curated bead box in the mail and I'll tell you my situation. My son had to be in Gainesville at the research hospital for the muscular dystrophy clinic and we it's about two, two and a half hours away. We stay in a hotel and I received my box just as I was getting him into the van to go. So the entire time that I'm making the drive and checking into the hotel, I even grabbed my <laughs> sketchbook on the way out the door because I took a peek at the box and then I was designing for the last two days and could not wait to get back home and jump into this box. So it is called Dusk in the Woods and it is a mix of greens and oranges and whites and we got some really unusual beads this time. This box is a little bit different. If you are new to the curated bead box, it is a value box and it is one that I have been getting for years and years before I was even on YouTube. It's so interesting and this month I have to say I have unboxed everything and I have to say this is not my favorite color combination. I am not huge into greens. I do love the orange and white. I generally combine it with other things. But that being said, there are some absolutely stunning beads in this box and I'm in love with a few of them and they have triggered my design that I am going to start with on this box. And the other thing that's unusual about this box is normally we get a lot of very long strands of glass beads and marble style beads but this month we only got three strands of beads and i will show you what they are we got a 10 millimeter bead that's a crackle glass in green and orange i love this bead this is absolutely beautiful now this pale green and orange I really do love so there's an exception to my color combination thing that I said and then we got this eight millimeter uh, it's like a duo style marble glass bead and it is a, even yet a different green and it really does look like marble and then we got this beautiful strand of six millimeter uh, it's a fern jade strand and it really does look like jade even though it's a glass bead and you know one of the things I love about curated beads box is the nice long strands that you get but that is all the strands that we got this month and instead in place of strands we got bags of peanut beads and I love peanut beads so I'll just show you apparently the peanut bead that is in the orange color is something that they have had I guess on their website I don't ever remember getting this in one of the monthly boxes and I'm going to be working with these in my project. These are the most beautiful opaque orange little peanut bead and there's a little bit of color variation on it on them. So I love those but this color this is apparently it says on the box this peanut bead that is in the aqua color is new so I imagine maybe it's a new color to their website but like I said I don't ever remember getting peanut beads in a curated bead box maybe we did and I just don't remember but I love them peanut beads are one of my favorite shapes they make amazing spacers they make amazing tiny beaded chains if you like that look to have a little bit of metal in between the beads and I just love them the other cool thing that we got in this month's box is three different silver spacers. Two of them are flower silver spacers that are six millimeters. So there's two different ones. There's this one, which I have something similar to this in my stash, if not the same thing, but I love them. They are fabulous to work with. And then we got this other sort of different shape flower spacer that's also six millimeter that looks kind of like a stamped rose so i love those i mean you can never have enough flower spacer beads or flower beads and then we also got a four millimeter spacer bead now in some of your boxes you may not get the exact same thing that i have because curated bead box puts a disclaimer on their box about maybe substituting some sizes and sometimes colors of things if there's a quantity issue but you always get the value of the box so it's really really great 
And then we received two of these stunning crystals. I love these. These are so fabulous if you are a fan of Y necklaces to add like the final drop. And they're also wonderful for bookmarkers. And if you do anything in home decor like sun catchers that are beaded, these are so wonderful. The faceting is beautiful and they are so heavy and they have these fabulously large holes. So any stringing material pretty much even a very thick leather would go right through there. So you have so many design options with those. And we had a bead mix of these electroplated beads and there are just some fabulous shapes. Now I got four of this shape and size in my mix, one that is a little bit larger and then I got one little faceted electroplated like pear shaped bead in my mix and your mix may be a little bit different. And then my favorite, favorite thing mix in this is this mix. I am so crazy about these crystal two hole connectors. I don't know if you can see the holes under the camera, but I absolutely love the faceting. I love the shape. And I just think, I mean, the possibilities for design with a little crystal two hole connector like this are wonderful. And I may, this may make its way into my project. I really love it. I haven't actually selected the beads. I'll come back after I clean up my mat and show you my sketch. I also love the size and shape of these milky white beads. These are beautiful. And then probably I, I'm, I'm between this orange peanut bead that I love, but these, this little sort of pear shaped or drop this milky it's a frosted milky bead we got six of them they feel so good in my hand they're so smooth and beautiful and it looks like there is a large enough hole in these to put two or maybe even three strands i will start experimenting when i when i pause the camera to clean up my mat but for sure this will make its way into my project this bead that i saw right before i started driving to the hospital was the thing that i was kind of centering my design around i really love this so we got some really fabulous things in this box we got one pendant which is this little multicolor crystal owl and he is just adorable i love his black eyes and this month's finding pack, which we get this every month in, usually it's either in gold or silver. They have kind of done a surprise of mixing sometimes, but there's everything you would need. There's bead stringing material and memory wire, ear wires, some head pins, lobster claw, jump ring, stretch cord. It is just fabulous. If you are new to jewelry making or newer, or if there are aspects of jewelry that you haven't tried, like if you've never made a memory wire bracelet, this box is amazing because you get this little sampler every month, either in gold or silver, and you can just really have fun. You can make so many projects with the curated bead box. And I tell you, even though I have many, many, many years experience in jewelry, I reach for these all the time. And it is amazing how often you reach for this, even if you're not new. So I highly recommend the curated bead box. And if you would like to receive it, I can put my code beneath and the link to the website. And then you can also use these codes that are on your box to go onto the website, which is dollarbead.com and they, these model numbers, and you can buy more if you loved something. So like I may be there getting more of these peanut beads. I just love those. I pick them up at bead shops whenever I'm traveling, whenever I get a chance. That is my expedited unboxing. I'm going to clean up my mat and I will be right back to make a project. I have organized myself and I'm going to just bring in my sketchbook because these are a couple of the sketches that I did and I'm sorry I know that the camera lens makes a shadow when I put a book under it but I have written a bunch of notes and done a couple of different bracelet sketches while I was away and thinking about this box and I realized that my beading mat looks a lot different than when I unboxed the box and so I'm just going to say again the color combinations in this month's box were not my favorite 
And so I encourage you that if that ever happens to you, because it's bound to happen where we just don't love every color or every color combination. And when you get a monthly subscription box, that is bound to happen. So I encourage you not to just toss the box aside, but really focus on the beads because th that's what I did. There are some fabulous beads in this box. And so I pulled those out and then I decided to change the color of green that is appearing in the box and add in some beads from my stash that I love and kind of change the the color combination to one that makes me happier. So I love these orange peanut beads. I love the white and orange. And then I was looking at the green that came in the box. It is very fresh. So I went into my stash and I took a little orange ceramic bird that matches these peanut beads really well. And I decided that as much as I'm not crazy about orange and green, I love orange and pink together. So I've gone into my stash and added in just a couple of beads that have those colors. And I found a pretty lime green lampwork flower and some lime green leaves, little check glass leaves. And I, you know, I believe in the power of the seed bead. I went into my seed bead stash and pulled out some pink and orange and green seed beads. And I've also gone into some of my leftover beads from past curated bead boxes. We had this beautiful pink with the silver like foil lining around it from a past box. I actually think it was just a few months ago. And it just goes great with the silver findings that were in this box. And then I have this little crackle pink crackle bead left over from the curated bead box a few months ago, which also just was really fresh and bright for me. So I'm working a little bit on a pattern here. I've just taken the stringing material that's in the box and cut a little length of it. And I was just kind of playing with my pattern. And so in my design, what I decided to do, I'll back up a little bit. What I decided to do is do a little bit of a colorful, chunky bracelet. I just noticed that I am very much not in the camera lens. Let me come back this way a bit. There, that should be better. So I decided to do a colorful, chunky bracelet design kind of based on my sketches. And so I've gone into my stash and also taken some little check glass flower beads. And I have decided to make a little small section on this bracelet to be a cha-cha section. So it's going to have those orange peanut beads, some pink flowers, some little check glass leaves with the, their lime colored with an AB finish on them just kind of peeking in that little mix and I am using the head pins that are in the box plus I took some from last month's box that I did not use up and I also have out here the silver spacers the six millimeter flower spacers and this was really my favorite bead this frosted bead and i was looking at the size of the hole in this and i think it is fabulous so on my sketch i was thinking that it would be a two strand bracelet that would go into a one strand bracelet but as i was playing i cut three strands of that and the three strands actually go through this bead and not only that, but when I loop those three strands back down through the crimp tube, I have not crimped it yet, but look how cool this is. All six strands can hide right inside that bead. So what I'm actually doing right now is working out the mechanics of my design. I am really excited that I've changed the colors a little bit to, you know, to make me more happy. And I am using a lot of the findings and a lot of the supplies that came in this month's box. And I think this is going to be fabulous. I just have to work out the mechanics because I want my crimps to be secure. I'm working out how I get my three strands to feed into one strand. I was debating about doing components like with simple loops for this section, but I need a seven inch bracelet. I don't want it to get too much longer than that. And the other thing I'm debating about is I just 
love this little crystal connector that has a hole on both sides so I was testing a jump ring fits through there perfectly of course the bead stringing wire also can go through and get looped around and crimped like that so I am not even sure as much as I love this if it's going to make it into my design but I was just sharing the process with you so I did start to kind of play around with my design you can see we did not have bead caps in this month's box so i have taken a couple out of my stash and i have just like gone into some of my own random beads that had the pink and orange and green and i did find another bead cap that i just love for this it just fits perfectly on the back of this bead and so I think this is going to sort of be my focal bead in the design and my idea is to thread these colorful seed beads onto the three strands of beading wire and maybe even mix in some of these beautiful orange opaque orange peanut beads just to tie everything together so let's get started I have put a little bead stopper on this end because I am also in the mechanics I'm also working out the length and you know what how many beads I want and what I need to make the proper length so I'm not even sure if this little milky glass bead is going to make it into my pattern so I'm just going to play around with that a little bit and I think I will start by crimping this and I think I am going to use my Zuron crimping pliers for this even though I have you know six wires in this crimp tube so I'm going to give this a go and see you know normally when you crimp you would try to separate your wires and when you crimp and fold this tube in half it separates the wires and then you do a complete fold but this is six wires in this crimp tube so that is not going to be possible but I'm going to give it a go and then test it before I string and before I continue with my bracelet. I'm just going to test it and see how strong it is. Let me just see if I think I have a good crimp there. It is <laughs> The crimp tube is really full with six wires in there, but it does feel, I am really pulling and it does feel very secure. Me go this direction it is very secure i am pretty happy with that so let me take one of these little silver crimp covers and put it on i'm just going to get this pretty little crimp cover to look like a bead and as i said in my testing of stringing materials i noticed that the like to get that closed up a little bit more. I notice that all six wires go through not only that bead, so that looks really nice. Not only that bead, but they also feed nicely through my bead cap has a really large hole on the top. So I'm happy with, with that. I think this is going to be pretty. Yeah, that's a beautiful little stopper there. <laughs> and I'm going to feed all three of those wires through that and then here I am going to dump out some of these seed beads and just do a little random pattern on these three strands and that is going to get connected to this but as I said I haven't decided if I had originally wanted this little connector to be in there in fact if you know me at all if you've been on my channel at all you know that I tend to eyeball it but I have my ruler here and I'm going to just kind of see where I would be lengthwise um, that would not if that is in there that is not going to give me a lot of space for my three strands so I actually may need to take something off and as much as I love those beads that came in the box, let me see what that does with my length. So I could, I need, I, you pretty much need an inch 
of length on a bracelet for your closure. It depends on what you're doing. And I'm going to do a little bit of an unusual <laughs> closure on this bracelet. But I think that if I keep the two flowers and the little bird and this and do about an inch of three strand, that should give me what I am looking for. I may even decide to do longer length of my three strands and save this for another project. We will see. Let me go ahead and dump out some of these seed beads and that is way more than I will need. Just put a few on my mat and kind of create a little pattern. So I hope this is not boring for you to kind of hear my design process. You know, some people like that, and for some people it helps them, and other people, you know, just think, oh, you talk too much. <laughs> so, you know, for those of you who don't want to hear the design process, fast forward or mute me, <laughs> but for the others who find this helpful, you know, I'm kind of sharing what goes on in my head and like the mechanics of how I would come up with the way I want something to look, but then how I make it work. So that is <laughs> what is going on here. So I'm going to just like choose one strand here and just string. And I actually think I am going to add in here and there one of those little peanut beads. So what I can do, let me, I am going to bead all three of these wires in just a little random, fun, colorful pattern. And I'll do that off camera and I will meet you back and we'll move on to the next part of this design. I have finished stringing and as always, when I am stringing, it gives me time to assess and look at all the choices and the options that I've put out as a possibility for myself. And so I always come back from my stringing having made some design decisions. And so what I found is that these beads have a really nice large hole. So I will be able to do the same thing on this end with this bead from the past curated bead box, uh, make a loop and have all of those wires feeding back into that. So I did just a random pattern with all of those colors of seed beads and I did one of the orange peanut beads and one of those little silver flower spacers on each strand just at random. It's one of the secrets to a really good design is when your elements can reappear somewhere else and it looks cohesive that way. So I sort of had that in mind when I was doing this. So in order to have the proper length, I had to take off my orange ceramic bead. I also am going to have to take off this beautiful crystal connector, which I really wanted to use. I love it. But I think what I'm seeing is that I need to make another bracelet because even I even switched to one of these smaller milky glass egg shaped beads and it looked great with my bead caps, but it was making my length too long. So these things have to be for another project. And um, so on this end here, I just chose my favorites. I love the little ceramic bird and there's something about this time of year with the green, the pink, the orange, the birds, the flowers. I It just made me happy. The other thing I decided to do is uh, to string all of my little cha-cha components that I made right onto the bead stringing wire. I had considered when I was working out the mechanics of it actually stringing them 
onto the jump ring of this crystal connector and that may even be a second design that could work beautifully but on this one I decided to do this one this way and so I thought I would just show you what I had to do here for these little leaves they have a drill hole from side to side like a briolette so I just have a little piece of 20 gauge medium tempered German style wire and I'm just going to feed that through the hole leaving one side a bit longer than the other side and I'm just going to pull it toward the top and this is one way to do a briolette and this is the way that I most often will do it if I don't want to have a long stem of wraps here so I'm just going to take my pliers and get that get those two wires you see what I did just get them to be really close to each other. And then I'm going to take this shorter wire and just cut it off right above. Can you see like right above, maybe I'll even go down a bit further, right above where my wraps are gonna be. So I can just take that, that little scrap away. And now I am simply going to do a normal wire wrapped loop and that end that I have just cut is going to be wrapped right as I wrap down this loop. So this part is just like a normal wire wrapped loop. Center it just like we normally would. And you can see my little cut end right there. He is going to be encased in this wire. Mm. <laughs> so I'm just going to like treat this like a normal wire wrapped loop and this is one of my favorite ways to handle a briolette style drill hole on a bead I really like it and on this particular design this is really pretty because the leaves protrude out just a little bit further than the flowers and the orange peanut beads so it really kind of looks like nature so I love that I I just love wrapping a briolette style bead let me just straighten my loop a bit and the other thing I was going to share with you you can make your section here of cha-cha as long or as short or as full or as sparse as you would like that is really your design decision but on if you're doing these with the peanut beads any kind of a little bend in the head pin is going to make it so that the peanut bead does not want to slide all the way down to the end of the pin. So what I had to do on quite a few of them is grab a hold of the head pin with a pair of pliers and then use my nylon jaw pliers to straighten out the head pin. I just found that any little curve prevented the peanut bead from going down onto the head pin. And so what I have done on every single one of these is used my one and a half millimeter one step looper. I, it really saves my hand when I have a lot of little pieces like that to wrap. So if you've never seen this before, you just thread your bead onto your head pin and push it through the hole in the back and let your bead come just a millimeter or so in front of that little edge of the tool or the little jaw and I just slowly close the tool. These head pins are really, really nice and thick, but I'll just slowly close the tool, take away what has been cut. And then as I am closing the tool, just pull that bead back out of the jaw of the tool. And then I can see that I have centered it. Now on this, it doesn't so much matter because it's a cha-cha style you know you don't really see the loops they kind of get lost in in the mix here so that is what i'm going to do is just thread on my third leaf and another peanut bead and that is really pretty it's almost like the bird is on a plant it's like a metaphorical little flower plant flowering plant so I really love that and so I have never made a bracelet this way but as I said the mechanics of this were a little bit puzzling so what I decided to do is actually to feed on a crimp tube 
And let me give myself a little bit of space because this is, bracelet is going to have an unusual closure. And I'm taking you guys along for the ride because as I said, this is a design that I have never done. It came out of, I need more space it came on the wire. I'm just moving it down a bit because what I have done, I'm going, I, I have made a little, a little handmade, very organic hook for this end and it is going to hook into a small loop of seed beads on this end and I have never done this before so as I said I'm taking you guys along for the ride so let me get another bead stopper before I lose all of my <laughs> stringing on this side okay so what I decided to do is actually connect my single strand here to my multi strand so I'm just going to loop that through there and loop this wire back through that crimp tube. And I don't need to worry about my spacing because my other end is still open. So let me just make that really small, as small as I can get it. Let me see if I can zoom in for you a bit. Just want to get that loop just as small as I can possibly get it. And now I want a really good crimp here, so I am going to uncross those wires. And what did I do with my Zuron pliers? Just going to uncross those wires. And this will be a more normal <laughs> crimp. Let's see if I am uncrossed. There we go. And just put that tube in the back of this plier and close the tool it separates the wire and then I'm going to go in this direction and close it really well give it a nice pull it feels great to me and I'm going to trim this away and put a crimp cover right here just as I did let me just see how I feel about it without a crimp cover I think I want the crimp cover. I think it looks nice, even though the little cha-cha section is going to sort of cover it. I think it looks nice to have that little silver bead. That looks great. Okay, let's bring this down and see what that looks like. Wow, <laughs> that is so pretty. I literally just strung the cha-cha section of this at random. I just alternated those little pink flower beads and the peanut beads and the leaves. I just wanted a little bit of green to be peeking in between. And so now I want to choose a seed bead for my loop here on this end. This end will be connected to my hook and this and then I'll know how long I want that loop to be on the other side so this is kind of counterintuitive I'm sorry guys let me zoom back out a little bit that's better this you know when we when we make bracelets and things we don't want rigidity but this is such a short section that it's going to be a little bit stiff but I think it will be okay I think it's going to be a pretty section of this bracelet so now I'm going to repeat the same thing that I did when I did this big focal bead and just put this crimp tube over all three of those strands and it does go it does want to go down inside the bead, the hole on that bead because it's so large which you know is going to be my friend because I I have six strands going into it so just collect them all and get them all down into that tube okay that looks pretty good let me give it one more little finesse right there that looks pretty good okay so let me show you how I did this little hook it's very simple um, I not sure 
I know it would be great for a necklace. I did this one off camera because as you can see, I wanted to hammer it. And I try to do that when the camera's not rolling so it's not pounding in your ear. But I did take a piece of 18 gauge wire and this is only like a maybe a two and a half, three inch piece. It's just a scrap. These little hooks do not take much. And you can really use anything you want and you can really make it as scrolly as you want. So this is the part that I'm going to put a jump ring on and this is the part that's going to hook into my loop. And so I'll just try to duplicate that. And I'm actually using my Zuron pliers to get that, that little first loop started. And so what I was trying to accomplish here, and you can hand sculpt it or sculpt it with your pliers because after you hammer it, everything will spread and shift a little bit. But I wanted a little space right there to attach it to my bracelet. So when I created that spiral, that's what I was looking at is a, a small, I wanted it decorative, but I wanted a small attachment place. So I am going to, let's see, sometimes I do, I'm going to hammer this anyway and kind of, kind of, you know, <laughs> misshapen the finish on the wire. Um, so I just want to get a hold of it and make like an open, just kind of an open decorative spiral. You know, use whatever, sometimes I use my nylon jaw pliers, sometimes I reach for, I'll put my round nose pliers in, you know, just whatever you, <laughs> whatever works for you, you know, to give you control of the wire. So. After I hammer, this will change, but I have that little space there for a jump ring or whatever. Now you can use bail making pliers here. I want to, I want this loop to come this way. And so I'm gonna put my wire in here on the widest part of my round nose pliers. So, you know, where it tapers. And I'm just going to bring that over the top. I want a really, beautifully exaggerated hook like that really exaggerated because my thinking is that when I make this this little kind of spiral like I did on this one that you know it will it will be secure it's going to grab onto the seed beads clean up my mat just a little bit and I can just trim away because all I want I do want it to be exaggerated but I just want to get a little just a little loop in there and I'm going to use my Zuron again because they have the teeniest tip on these pliers so they're great crimping pliers but they have such a small fine fine tip that you can get like tiny little little curves in things and I'm not going to fuss with this too much now because I'm actually going to pause the camera and hammer this and I like this one I just really love the look of the of it being flattened and I love the texture on it that I get I used a ball peen hammer so here's my here's my bench block it's just I just keep it it's quite heavy I keep it right on the side of my work table and I am going to use a ball peen hammer which is this one and flatten it and then use this in to give it that hammered kind of dented look so let me pause the camera and hammer this one because honestly I kind of like the shape of this one a little bit better than the first one that I made they're very organic and free form which is you know makes them really fun to create so I'll pause and and hammer and I'll be right back. Okay, I just wanted to show you how much the shape gets altered and how it spreads out when you hammer but that is totally okay it's to be expected and so here at this point like this is really sharp so I will come in with my pliers you can hand sculpt you can use your pliers just to close things it is quite work hardened now I want to give that a little, my little hook, a little bit of a bend here. And I may even play with it a little bit more once I have it attached to my bracelet. But I need to close up this loop as well because when I put my jump ring in there, I don't want this to slip off the bracelet. And so I quite like this one. And you can like hand sculpt. These are so organic and just so fun. 
and I just think it's so pretty and scrolly. You can even come back in, you know, I just tend to fuss with things, but you can come back in with your round nose pliers and kind of alter the roundness. Oh, I'm sorry, I pulled out of the camera. I was showing you that you can come in with your round nose pliers and kind of alter this shape gently. And it's just really pretty, I love it. So. I actually like that one better than the first one. So let me get, oh, I can use the, I had a jump ring in here. This may be too big. This was the one I was going to use for, yes, that's too big. Let me get a smaller jump ring. There's a nice little one. And that is going to be attached to this end of my bracelet. And then I'll be able to take a final measurement with my little loop of seed beads. <laughs> a final measurement with my little loop of seed beads. Um, I need to just, let me, before I attach it, just flatten this a little bit more. I quite like that. And I'm just going to add this right there and of course make sure that this jump ring is closed really really well i like that clicking sound because then i know the two ends of the metal have met each other i'm going to put my pliers this way what a cute little clasp i hope it works <laughs> and so now i need to decide on my loop for my seed beads and I think what I am leaning toward is this one that is um, these are 80 but they have they're crystal pink they have like a lining there you can see through the seed bead on the glass on the outside and then they have that that pink lining and I think it's so pretty it has a little bit of a flash and so it really looks good with my little check glass flower bead that I have here so I'm just going to dump some of those out when you're making this little loop you have to put a crimp tube on first don't forget you'll do all your stringing and you will not have any way to to close it to stop the beads <laughs> okay let's go again crimp tube and then the little loop of seed beads and i'll check my length one more time as i said this loop can be quite small and hopefully my hook is going to grab on there and do a good job with let me try it on before i remove any of my pattern and see how it looks it's actually it's measuring at eight inches and it is a little bit long for me but I quite like it it is fabulous um, I think I can make the length just right if I can get it off well that tells me my hook is going to work because it's really really stable on there I think I can make my length better by just removing this pink seed bead. I want, uh, not seed bead, I think if I remove this glass bead, I did use one down here. And honestly, I don't even think that I need that one. Let me just readjust this pattern a little bit. You guys will get tired of me saying it but never underestimate the power of a tiny little seed bead. They can be workhorses in your designs. And let's see, I should have plenty of space. Look at that, that is so pretty. I really love it. And that just shortened my length just a little bit. So let me put my crimp tube back and the nine one two three. feed that wire back down through the crimp tube 
and back through oh wow it goes through everything it goes through the flowers nicely that's great it just gives you a little bit of leverage and it looks really nice when you don't cut your your tail wire right up here near the crimp that loop may be too small let's see no actually that loop is beautiful that is so pretty I love it it's just a little bit different so I'm gonna pull this tight without making my beads super tight up to each other I don't know if you guys can hear Oprah snoring but she's under my table and she's snoring this is so pretty I really really love it okay I can go ahead and crimp and close it give it a nice pull and a crimp cover on that as well you do not have to do a crimp cover but I don't know for me I don't like to see a folded crimp I if I'm using a folded crimp I generally go ahead and put the crimp cover on so I have these two stuck together I just think it looks nicer I may need to go into my stash and get a smaller one let me see how this one no I can make this one work so just get that little tube in there and like I said I find that if I go slowly and I'm not too aggressive I can usually get these on with ease and just go side to side and just make sure that little space is closed really well like that it looks great now I can trim my wire down here underneath this flower so it will not show at all I love that and it gives you know when you finish it off like this end you don't see anything cut this is such a pretty bracelet I love this design I love the little cha-cha I love the leaves you know if you're a fidgeter this is a bracelet that will just make you happy you can play with you can spin these around you can kind of like you know check out the different shapes flowers peanut beads check glass leaves this is so beautiful let me try it on and I love making my own clasps I think I think making your own clasp is just a beautiful thing. I have to pull out of the camera a minute because, you know, <laughs> when the camera's rolling, you cannot clasp a bracelet as every YouTuber that makes jewelry knows that is a fact. <laughs> there. Oh my, look how pretty this bracelet is. It's so colorful and playful and different, and I just love it. So as I said at the outset of my video if you open a box and you are not crazy about the color combination my advice is to pick out your favorite beads and go into your stash and add something in that you know makes you happy and sort of change that color combination you know but don't set the box aside and so a couple of little things i was going to tell you i found on my peanut beads that there was a little like dusty coating on these beads and so i just gave them a little rinse with soap and water and laid them on a paper towel and they just came out so shiny and glossy and just much prettier and so you may have that same situation and you know the curated bead box is wonderful because i've done one bracelet that is really beautiful but i have so many beads left i mean there are many 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 projects left in in my box and so yeah i'm already playing with <laughs> this bracelet i just love it and i love this little ceramic bird bead and i actually found these little birds on amazon and i can link that below if any of you are interested they came in quite a few colors i believe i got blue and orange 
I think there's yellow. I can't remember. There might be red as well. But I can link those below. And these are little check glass flowers that I believe I also got from Amazon. When I edit the video, I will put links in the description box where you tap more for anything that I know where I got it that I think you might be interested in in case you would like to do a similar design. So I hope that you were inspired by this or picked up a little tidbit of information or got some kind of an idea that always makes me happy and if um, you have not heard I have been asking our community to email me pictures of your little furry supervisors we it seems the more that I chat with everyone that almost all of us have some kind of a little helper uh, cats dogs um, you'll see some of the pictures somebody has a ferret uh, somebody else has um, Oh, I forget what she said, but you'll see that we all seem to have supervisors around our jewelry work tables, and it is just a joyful thing for the community to get to see everyone's little helpers. So I'll put my email also in the description box below the video, and if you can take a moment to send me a picture and the name of your little helper, that would be so beautiful. I'm going to start adding those in on the end of my videos for as much as I can. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. Also, if you have not subscribed to the Curated Bead Box and you would like to, I will give you my code in the description box and you can get a discount off of your first box. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. I hope you're all safe and well and having fun on your beading mats. Ciao jewelry making friends. Just a side note, in my box this month, there was a message from Curated Bead Box, and somehow their shipping has caused a misalignment with the months of the box, and they are saying that this month's box, Dusk in the Woods, is actually the March box. So some of you may realize that in your own monthly subscription box with curated bead box. So just a side note, thank you for watching.